Hey there, this is KV and this is the moon phase report for the full moon that is set to arrive on November 17th, 2013. Um, so let's see, where do we start with this one? I have so much to say. I hope I can collect myself and get all of this out there. First off, uh, you may be noticing that, you know, we had um, Mercury go direct a few days ago. But it's really odd. I've kind of said that this was one of the best Mercury retrogrades we've ever had because it really, really, really has been like pulling us back to get realigned in a better sort of way to really like see things from this new perspective to make all these changes that you really didn't have the energy or the insight to change. So I know I heard a lot of people getting a lot of creative inspiration and you know, even like seeing seeing their websites in a different way and having all these new perspectives of how they would like to change it and what they want to start doing. And, you know, because it was coinciding with um, this really important time that we're in where we are in this huge detox and letting go of all the things that are more the old way and um, clearing out all these things so that we can move more fully activated in the... Um, in the new world, into things that we want to be doing, into really honoring our inner voice, uh, guiding us into this kind of new atmosphere that we're not very familiar with. Um, so, you know, Mercury worked wonders with that for people. I really didn't hear about anybody having too much strife. I had nothing that went haywire. Um, it was just smooth as silk. Everything went great. I was able to have better conversations with people of really understanding things on other levels. So I really love this Mercury retrograde. But what I did notice is that when it went direct, mayhem went around everywhere around me. Every computer, every system. I even had it with, there was something with my, on the Love Collective, because it's a, it's a social networking site. So I pay to have the Love Collective set up so it's like Facebook, but it's just all of us, so it's cool. But um, like there was some problem with the system and they were even like, no, it's on your end and you have to do A, B, and C and you have to put one foot up and you have to twirl around and then you have to say the magic word and you have to do da da da. And I'm like, what? I have to do what? Like that kind of stuff can make me malfunction. But I was like, really, it's on my end? Are you sure it's on my end? Can it be on your end? But it was one thing after another, even like I, you know, all these people coming forward. Oh no, I gave you the wrong time on my birth chart and it's already there. And, you know, things, problems with my website, problems with you know, taking hours to fix computer problems where there was no problem while Mercury was retrograde. But the moment it went direct, everything went kind of crazy like that. So it was kind of funny that at least for me, it was this aftermath. <laughs> then it was like, ah, and everything it was just too much, too much, too much. But um, so anyway, let me try to explain this further. Uh, one thing, I mean, you know about the time speeding up right now and everything is so fast i know you're so overwhelmed because you want to do this you want to do that you want to do this but you're already having all these other obligations that are kind of keeping you you know anchored down into taking care of the old so you aren't able to really move into the new just yet and um you know one thing i want to tell you is whatever you know um i'm getting scattered already uh because Venus is conjunct Pluto right now, everything that you are feeling is very intense. It's very much about going to the depths with us. It's very much about like, oh my gosh, I can't deal with this. Oh my gosh, I can't handle one more thing. You know, there's a really strong um, flavor to it where it's hitting you to the core of like extreme overwhelm. And uh, another piece of this is that the things that you can't keep up on, the things that are making you feel really stressed, um, the things that you're feeling almost like held back from, like you're in a quicksand kind of thing that you can't get out of, 
uh, there's something in that situation that is part of the old that you're actually needing to let go of. It may be responsibilities, you know, it may be like you've been wanting to wear all the hats in something and it's really time for you to hand over other responsibilities to other people and focus your attention in other directions. So whatever that is that you're just really frustrated over right now is just something that is more uh, a part of the old that you're needing to let go of um, because you are ready to do all these new things. You are ready to express in these new avenues. You are ready to jump on these other new ventures, but right now you have one foot in the old and one foot in the new, and you don't have time to do any of that new because you're so in the old. Um, and it's not necessarily that the old is a bad thing. I mean, it could be your career, it could be your job that you absolutely love, but there's something about it where you're needing to go to a higher level in expressing what you're doing. So it could, like I, I said, it's a lot of times it's like, you know, especially now because we don't have time for things like we used to, everything is so fast. It's crazy how fast it is. It's really kind of frustrating because I think so much, many of us are so full of this inspiration, so full of these new ideas, so full of these new things you wanna birth into the world but it's like, there's not enough time, you know? It's like, what more can you cut back on in your life? Like I, yesterday I had like a total breakdown where I was just, you know, I went out hiking and I was just almost crying because I was like, I don't have any more hours to give, you know? What, what, what can I do, not sleep now? You know, and what can I do, not go on these hikes with my dog because I just, I can't get caught up. And then for me, I've had things where it's kind of funny, but just things are just kept being dropped into my path of uh, roadblocks, um, things to hike over, all these obstacles to deal with. And so many of them are so silly. Like, you know, even I had it, you know, yesterday with these chart orders went to this girl in California, but then it came up that it was an undeliverable address, even though it was a completely valid address. And then so there was all this like, oh no, they're coming back and then you got to ship them back out. And we're both like, what happened? Why did this happen? Ah, and then, you know, it was, I just, you know, went out of the house after that. Cause I was like, I can't deal. Everything is like pushing me back, you know? And I was so frustrated by it. But then I just really saw, you know, how like a lot of these things are details of things that I need somebody else to help me with. You know, it's all these things. Like, I just need help with all this stuff in my business. And it's like, I can't get ahead because I'm not finding the correct help, which I am putting it out there that I really <laughs> need the perfect person who can do this job of mine. And they have to know astrology. They have to be very detail oriented. Like they have to be like perfectionist. I need that Virgo in somebody. And um, that's where last night I was out there wishing for that. I was like, I just need that. I need to hand over some of this responsibility because I can't create these new things and then it's just stressing me out. So basically all of you are having something like that where you just need to look at this stuff that's really stressing you out and really kind of be open to what you need to um, bring into your life or whatever kind of changes you need to make so that you do have more time to express in these new things that are inspiring you. So there's lots of frustration with that. Lots of frustration of just like feeling like you never catch up. I can never catch up. There's so much to do. I can't catch up. And you know, it kind of goes back to what I said a couple weeks ago about the hindsight vision and really just kind of, you know, going to that place of figuring out the details of how to get yourself out of these situations of feeling so backed up or so busy or whatever. If anything, just like looking into the future and knowing, you know, in a, in a week's time, this is not even going to bother me. It's really not that big of a deal. I always get through this stuff. I will, you know, it's that cramming for a test thing where you get so worked up. And I was thinking too, when I was out walking, I was like, I'm not good with linear time. I'm really excited for <laughs> changes of that to come like deadlines time things like even if i know i have an appointment at 1 p.m i cannot completely relax until i'm done with that like the whole day i kind of waste all my energy because i'll be like i have an appointment at one what time is it i have an appointment at one okay well, i have an appointment at one <laughs> like i can't even like 
relax if I have any kind of appointments. That's why I need to have things like first thing in the morning and to get them done. But I've always been that way. I'm not good with deadlines. I'm not good with <clears throat> the pressure of it has to be done by this time, you know, and maybe it's even like having so much hindsight vision encoded in me that, you know, I have a really big patience with things and a really big like it'll happen when it's supposed to. It's all good. But when I have to work with this world of, no, I need it by this time and this time, I'm like, ah, I'm freaking out. I can't relax. But um, um, I think I was saying something else about that, and I went on a side thing, a side tangent. Um, but so anyway, this is a big thing right now, and really, we just have to calm down. We have to not get worked up because you'll be like, <laughs> you won't even be breathing deeply because you're so overwhelmed about how much has to be done. And look, at we're moving into holiday season, too, and this is classic holiday season energy, you know, of freaking out. We're not done yet. I still have to get that present. I still have to do that. When am I going to find time for that? Ah! you know so this is hot and heavy in the world right now so just do anything you can you know more than anything I'm getting so many messages constantly to tell you guys about getting out in nature right now it's almost like you know there's there's this major powerful energetic shift work that's going on in each of our bodies and one thing too that's happening right now is that we're all going through this massive detox and it's kind of strange like you're not even doing anything you know, to promote the detoxing within your body, but it's happening on its own. So you're gonna be, you might be getting acne, you might be like having stomach pains, you might be, your bowels are doing different things, you're, you're peeing constantly or something. Like your body is really working on its own with the powers that be or whatever to help kind of cleanse your body and get this stuff out and it's that's one of the reasons things are having to go so fast because of this new kind of thing that we're moving into in 2014 you know i was even looking at um i was just looking at you know the only we, we move into the new year with only two planets in retrograde motion and they're venus and jupiter you know and even having a new moon on that first day of the year you know so it's like right there and i can't remember exactly what the energies are saying on that day and beginning commencing the new year but it's about what do you love what do you really love what do you really want to do to feel like you're living this positive expanded really living your life to the fullest kind of things like what do you need to bring in to have that feeling that you feel content with how you're living your life and how you're expressing in the world so you know we start that year with the spotlight saying go within what do you love what do you love to do where do you need to live what kind of people do you need to be around you know so we're in that last kind of birth canal squeeze and it feels like a squeeze for sure there's a lot of pressure with this but we're in that last kind of thing of really like birthing into these new beings you know and as i've been saying i'm writing it a lot in my things like this right now everything we're doing is working to truly be the change that we want to see in the world like we're really thinking about how we want to really be all this stuff we talk about, really be all this stuff we read about, really be on all this intellectualized information inside of us, really being it, really walking it, you know? And um, I just put this post up today on Facebook about, you know, just going out there and doing one good deed for somebody today, like really going out and looking for who needs help, who needs assistance, who needs to look, who needs a smile, who needs to be seen, um, who needs to be acknowledged, who needs to be honored, you know, who needs something that you have to give that is in the form of a loving oneness with we showing everybody that we're all in this together and we got your back you know and that's going to be the big theme of what 2014 is about and like really being the change that we want to see in this world so that everybody else will keep seeing it and they'll keep doing it and you know I want to remind you like when you're out and about I had this most beautiful day with it a couple of days ago or a week ago I don't know but I was out in town and and I was just really aware of being the change I wanted to see in the world, you know, and I was really aware of, you know, I want to be present. I don't want to be thinking of this list and what I have to take care of and that phone call I need to make and that issue I have to deal with and that 
thing that I forgot because even though I'm a Virgo moon and I used to never forget anything, I forget everything now because I have thousands of details going off and on at once. So I miss things now where I never used to. But um, so not thinking about those things, not thinking about the thing you're regret you're you regretting, not thinking about the obligation you have later that's stressing you out. Just not just being present when we're out in the world in the company of other human beings, knowing that this is an opportunity to affect change. For them and for other people around you know and that's why I know I've said before like I'm the most friendly person in stores like I go into a store and I'm like I'm present that's probably why I can't ever remember anything I need to get I always have to get I put a list on my phone and I'm like okay, but I, gotta, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta get it because I go in there like who is here you know I go in and first thing look at all the checkout people that are there that I probably know and say hi and then it's like eyes up eyes up eyes up who do I know who needs a smile, who needs to be acknowledged, you know, I, I try to be tro so present anyway, that's who I am, but it was a lot different this other day, I was even more so just like almost pretending I was at a family gathering and everybody is my family, so why would I walk by anybody and not at least give them a smile? And it was so fun and like everywhere I went it was just I was having conversations with this person in line this person in line you know everywhere I went there was just all these just great connections happening everywhere really talking about valuable things sharing wisdom sharing love and it was like I don't know it was something that was really different I feel like I'd never been that present with it before I'd never been that much like this is my responsibility you know I felt like this is my responsibility I have to be this change I want to see in the world and like I said I keep using that phrase like every day now where I never did before but I finally got it you know it's being that stuff we want to see change we can't just sit here and say I want the world to change people need to love each other you know we need to da da da, da and whatever and then go out acting like a bitch and acting all snotty and pissed off because something didn't go your way or it wasn't on your correct timeline you know so really like taking all those visions of what we see changing in the world and being them in every moment or every moment possible because it is, you know, there is a balance where sometimes we're just, we can't be that. But just trying to make it our priority of really like, you know, if I want people to be more loving in the world, then I'm going to go out in the world and give more love, you know. And um, so there's a big thing like this, and I'm sure I'll talk the whole next year about it, you know, because this is just us really like f getting it, you know, like really like I get it. I get that I have to go out and be this if I want to see this other change um, reflecting and rippling out in the world. I have to fully be it. I can't just wish for it, you know, and then be hypocritical about it. You know, that's where even like, you know, you know, if you're going to go and do yoga, you know, I used to always say this years ago because I would always notice that, but you know, the ones who are off doing yoga, then they're flipping you off because you didn't stop for them when they tried to cross the road or, you know, or whatever, like, you know, you're just like, um, 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 you know, like, don't be a hypocrite like that. We have to stop being hypocrites of, you know, saying all these things when we're in this safe space and feeling love and, you know, feeling connected and all is one and then going into another space and being completely disrespectful and judgmental. Um, that was something too I got on that day of like learning to not look at people and judge them um, thinking oh you're not on my level or oh we have nothing in common or you know I don't need to give you any attention because you are not my kind of people or you know any kind of thing like that just really being aware of it and um, smiling at whomever you know loving whomever making time for whomever and really kind of erasing those feelings of separatism um, through similar likes in life and feeling like I don't resonate with you so I don't need anything to do with you like that right there is the most hypocritical thing you can say you know so we there's so much rewiring and a lot of you are waking to this so you know what I'm talking about you're like oh my gosh I've been thinking that I've been trying to figure out how to be this thing I really want to be you know, instead of just reading it in a book and going, oh, I'm that, that's what I want, and da da da, but, you know, passing the test, going out into the world and truly, like, being this thing, you know, so be conscious of it, you know, it, you know, being out, 
going out into nature, I mean, going out into, oh, I have to go back to that, going out into public, you know, really being conscious of the influence you are making, what people are thinking when they see you. Are they thinking you are a snotty little bitch? Like, I don't know if I ever told you that, but I used to be the biggest bitch that there ever was. I tortured everybody in high school. I was the meanest one there by far. And, um, and, um, I was so mean, but I was also, then I was very much like, you know, in this kind of punk rock scene and very cool. I was very cool. Um, absolutely. And, but so because of that, I was very much about separatism and you are just so not cool enough to be with me, you know? And I remember even like feeling like it was cool to look like a bitch. I remember feeling like holding myself in that snotty way of like, whatever, you're so not important. I remember just thinking that was really cool and attractive. <laughs> like that's more attractive than smiling. <laughs> you know, I really did. It was, you know, that's where we grow up. We change, you know, you can't, that's another reason why I'm always telling people we can change on a dime. So we are not allowed to judge people for any kind of opinion or whatever kind of um, mentality they hold. You can't judge them because they can change I mean, through awareness and through awakening, we all shift. So we have to be more compassionate with where we're at and with where other people are at, you know, because even like, who knew that I could go from that, you know, to how I express now in the world. And I remember my dad had told me this guy who went to high school with me had come over to his house and was smoking pot. And he said, he had said, oh my gosh, yeah, your daughter. He was like, she used to be the meanest person alive. And then she moved to San Francisco and became a hippie and is so loving. We all love her now. <laughs> and he told me that story. And I was like, that's so funny. I did. I shifted though. It was so funny. I had a quick shift. Like, yeah, it was somewhere like 21, 22, 23 by 20, just 20. between those ages, I went, did a, a 180 in, um, the kind of person I, became but it was also that was when I started to love myself for the first time and started to really honor myself and that's when I didn't want to be that mean person anymore that was just hurting people and didn't even care at all like whatever you know whatever I was so like that I just didn't even care and now like I can't hurt I even like, so we had three days of putting the wood burning stove in the house, which an another thing that put me so behind because I couldn't get any work done. And, um, and, um, I was move. I had to move everything because it took all this new space. So now my, oh, that's why you see that I'm sitting here because I had to move the couch and you're also probably noticing I finally got a microphone too, so you can hear me. But, um, so I had to move moon bears crate. Cause she, she loves her crate and all the animals around the neighborhood love her crate. <laughs> like they come in the house to sleep in her crate. And, um, so I had to move it and I found this black spider and a really big one. And I could tell it wasn't a, a black widow. I just didn't see the red thing. And I was like, Oh, and I could tell it was so gentle and like, please just leave me alone. I want to stay in the back of this crate and, um, and be safe for the winter. But I just was like, ah, big spider. Um, Black Widow, I just kept thinking Black Widow. And I so I put it outside and then later on I felt so bad because I was like, you know, it didn't have the red on it. I don't think it was a Black Widow and now, and it was so safe and I put it outside and now, you know. So like, I, I used to be someone who like did not give a shit about what you thought of me. I did not care how much you hated me. I did not care about you unless you were my peoples. And them, I, you know, held on a pedestal and protected and, you know, helped soar in the world. But I shifted from that to now, like, being tortured <laughs> for days about thinking about putting that poor spider outside when he probably wasn't even going to do any harm. And, <laughs> you know, so that's that thing, though, you know, when you open your heart and stuff, life shifts, you know. So we cannot, that's why too, you know, with like factory farming and, you know, fast food restaurants and, you know, McDonald's and Burger King and all that stuff um, is supplying the most bottom of the barrel food products that are out there. It's all genetically modified. It's all full of chemicals and every piece of animal meat is the most tortured 
suffering meat DNA that you can take into your body. So like, you know, when you know that, everything shifts in your life. Like you couldn't pay me to eat McDonald's. You couldn't pay me. You'd have to stick a gun to my, you'd have to, well, that's kind of dramatic, but um, that's me That's me trying to make the point that I won't touch that stuff. I won't eat that stuff. So having that, you know, the moment I knew the consciousness, the moment I found out the truth of what's really, the, the, the moment I found out the truth of how they can sell a burger for a buck, you know, the moment I found out the truth of that, you shift completely and then your heart opens to this other way, you know. So we all are going through this same kind of process of awakening and consciousness. And once you learn something, once you are made uh, aware of something, you can't go back. We don't go back on this. Um, it's kind of like, too, like if you're a drinker, you know, I stopped drinking pretty much when I around I was 24. I, I stopped kind of early, even though I was hardcore heavy in it, <laughs> like hardcore heavy. I was definitely heading for alcoholism if I would not have made the changes I made when I was around 24. Um, and it was just wanting to live differently in life, wanting to be more present, wanting to not, you know, go there with that. But even with that, you know, I, when you cut something out like that, when you're made aware of something, when you, you know, learn a more conscious way about things in life, and my example was drinking, I've never been able to drink again. You know, it's like I love to drink. Anytime I, anytime I do, I have the time of my life, but it's so toxic in my body now. It's and a lot of people, you all, I know a lot of you people know this, you've discovered this when you stop doing it your body purifies and exposes you to the toxins in it and then you can't do it anymore you you are like hung over to the first degree every time you have any kind of drink I, I even tried like I'm like maybe organic wine can I do organic wine and still nope can't do it but um so I do that rarely <laughs> but um so what am I saying what am I saying what am I saying um so we're all uh shifting uh, or we can all shift on a dime. So that's where we have to train our minds to not be so judgmental and to classify people and to hold them in that classification for the rest of their, their life. You've done this, so you can never be, re it can never be redeemed. You can never be forgiven. Um, putting people in boxes and cutting them out, that's not allowed. We have to be more open and more um, conscious of our own path and where we have come from. Because that's too, if we can be honest with our own inner growth and with how much we have shifted and changed in life, then we're just much more open and patient with everybody else and understanding they're doing the best they can. It's, you know, it's not the easiest thing for us to see. This is a big journey, especially if it's like family members we have problems with or, you know, someone that we've just had this long-term problem with of something we can't heal. Um, we're never supposed to just like, be like done with it we have to be open to there it will eventually be some kind of way to heal and bring the love into this because it does not benefit anybody to hold grudges and to be like oh I just can't deal with you and and you know and you know that's the thing too I was getting with this full moon and with this energy it's a lot about partnerships too so on one hand we're getting really clear a huge energy that's around us for you know has been around us and is continuing, but it as a really it, it is at a really high peak right now. Is needing to state your needs, needing to be valuable, needing to be valued, um, and having kind of some friction with partnerships in the process of stating your needs. And you know, I was even like thinking that the other day, like, gosh, it's so hard getting along with other humans because we're all walking wounded so we all get triggered by our wounds and then we lash at everybody else so it's this it's this horrible vicious cycle and it's like how do we get over that you know how do we like look at all this pain as um and all this conflict as and all the buttons that are pushed with us you know how do we look at that as a blessing how do we learn to go whoa what this person said just really pushed buttons and pissed me off and instead of just lashing at them and wanting to get even and hurt them right back for how they hurt you but to really go okay wait what does this mean like and 
And what do I need to see about myself? Like we have to start this whole new dialogue, inner self dialogue um, with things that are coming into our lives that are not comfortable, that are repeating themselves, that are making you want to hate other human beings, that are making you think it's so impossible to have relationships, you know, all those things we just really need to look at and shine the light on us and just see, you know, first kind of see, oh, you know, I'm... I'm feeling triggered because of this thing from my childhood because it's always going back there. I mean, it's like that's where all the secrets are. That's where that's why parents now are so conscious of this and that's why these kids are being born and they have these magical life expressions because we're so aware of it's all developing right then and there when they're children. Everything that they are going to believe that they can have in life is being learned when they're children so because we know so much of that now the children have different chances in life but because the parents didn't know that when we were growing up we're still stuck having to heal all that stuff so anything that's triggering us we always have to go back to what was it that I saw what was it that I was ingrained in me how was I treated um, and how is that now reflecting in me being defensive over whatever's happening that I don't want to hear that this other person is telling me? Because you'll always be able to go back to that childhood and see, oh, you know, this is how I learned it. This is how I was treated. This is how I was talked to. And, you know, whatever, it'll be a specific thing for you. But, you know, kind of, if anything, anytime those things do come up and happen, um, just go back and focus it back into childhood and maybe use that look at it as this opportunity to make peace and heal something that happened back then you know maybe this same lesson keeps happening over and over and over for you to look back and to you work for you to work on healing it now and know too that maybe this time if you can heal it if you can deal with the confrontation or the hurt in a mature way in a um, in a hindsight vision sort of way of honoring yourself honoring them then just maybe 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 this will be like the last time that ever happens you know maybe like you learning this one lesson now can be like the last time it happens you know so we can't just keep doing this fight and run you know you hurt me and I'm running away and I'm closing the door on you and I'm done with you we can't have that anymore. We have to work to bring the peace. And, you know, after we also look at our childhood and say, oh, well, that's, you know, why I'm doing this or why I'm feeling this. This is what I learned. But so by doing that, um, you also uh, need to then do that with them. And you need to then be like, you know, this was something from their childhood too. And they're having problems with me because of, this thing that happened to them you know so it's like opening our hearts to this compassionate kind of thing and losing our defense mechanisms that just want to like banish you if you've hurt me i'm going to banish you from my life if you hurt if you've hurt me you know because that is the natural reaction and that is the reaction that has gotten us to where we are now in this world of so much separatism and um we have to like lose our egos in order to move into this space of feeling compassion for everybody else. But it's the only thing that will make us happy in the long run. Because remember those times when you're in that confrontation with someone and how you can't do anything and you're so upset and you can't get it off your mind and you're completely not being present because it's what going over and over in your head of what was said, what they did. Oh my gosh, how am I going to get even? How am I going to come back at that? You know, so just think about how miserable it makes you and steals your life. And if you can just like come from that humble point of view in seeing yourself and the other parties, then you're on the road to doing it in a, uh, handling it in a proper um, growth impacting sort of manner. So... If you're in something right now like that, which you probably are, just kind of think about that, you know. 
just think about how you're done with having these kind of things. Think about how, gosh, how do I do make it the most of this one so that I don't have to do this anymore? Because I just want to be in love with everybody, you know? I just want to be in the uh, life is good. And I honor you and I respect you and I'm feeling heard. But do you understand because of this Taurus new moon, sun in Scorpio, it is very much about you needing to state your needs. So, you know, I just had something with someone and I, you know, later came back and was like, I know I'm really bad with stating my needs. And it goes back to childhood so I can see that I wasn't honored having needs. So of course now anytime I have to state my needs, it's like irrational, you know, but I'm like, be sympathetic with that. <laughs> you know, I don't mean it bad. I don't have, you know, if I've, if I've been giving, giving, giving too much, and then I feel like it's not a fair balance, I have that, then I have a hard time honoring myself, loving myself, valuing myself enough to put myself forward and say, hey, I actually need it to be like this. So it's one of my, you know, lessons in life. But all of us right now are feeling this with something that's very needs related of, you know, trying to come forward and be like, I need this to feel valuable. I need to have this in my life to feel valuable. I, um, you know, you, this can be going with your business too. And like, you know, just things of like, it's just on our minds right now of, of needs and feeling valuable. So just be aware of that that is the kind of energy and what is coming out of you is something that needs to be spoken. You can't bury it. Things need to be more on equal balances with people. We can't do this like, give and give and give and give and give and give and give just to make you happy i just want you to be happy i want you to be happy you know it's really got to be this thing of like i want to make you happy but i need this stuff to make me happy you know and i need to receive more too you know so a lot of these things are not easy for us to say because the root of being able to say them is feeling self-worth and honoring who we are you know so so many of us don't really know that we don't really know that we're valuable or good enough or worth it, you know? So you can see why this is the challenge right now of to be able to state those things without having someone else lose their cool and then make you feel like you're wrong for stating what you need. So there can be that thing though with the balance of they've been so used to you giving so much that, you know, now they're like, what, who are you to? Da, 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 or whatever so then and that's most likely what it's going to be right because we're not yet at that compassionate place of being able to have nonviolent communication with peoples so that you really hear each other and so that you honor where each other's coming from we don't have that yet we go you pushed buttons in me i'm mad you know so but that's just the journey we're at right now and we can change on a dime you know remember that so anything that you're entwined in now can be rectified in a positive way it can be healed it can be brought to right action and that's what a lot of the energies are working to do right now so what was some other things um we talked about detox oh yeah that was something too where um there's you know and i was trying to identify it a couple days ago and i just really couldn't it was it's like a really strange not positive energy um, of almost like something like something coming in at the very end that messes everything up kind of like this secret thing going on that throws a wrench in things uh, and it's just I couldn't get over feeling that like there's something that's going to come in that knocks our socks off and like is like like and, and you know I told you too I felt like me getting that message to share with you guys about remembering there's so much good going on in the world there's so much good going on all over the place but we're not seeing it you know and I was like I just got this big feeling that we're walking into kind of the true storm that we've been anticipating for years and like this is something about this end of this year could bring something that really just has us feeling so unsettled so unsafe so fearful for what is to come and i almost feel like it's so collectively out there right now anyway in everybody there's a really big fear there's a really big like i don't think we're safe and 
I don't know what we're going to do about money and how we're going to do this. And, you know, there's a lot of that energy out there in a really heavy way and kind of even like my head just so started to hurt even saying it. Um, but uh, I do know, though, that no matter what we end up seeing, no matter what ends up happening, um, I just remembered something from a dream last night, too. I was told this, that you're not going to understand what is going to come, but you have to trust 100% that you're safe. You have to trust that this is part of the process of the fall, of the systems collapsing, collapsing, um, of all this stuff that has been so wrong for so long. So it has to completely collapse right in front of us in order to build this new way. But that no matter what you do see, you're not going to understand it, but you have to ultimately trust that it's going to be okay. You have to connect with all these other people out in the world who are doing good things and who are um, bringing in this new world, who are holding the space for this new world energy and to just trust that it's going to be okay and no matter what, you will get through it. You will be safe. I know that um, with the storm and with the collapse, there's going to be a magic carpet ride kind of there's going to be, uh, and that's how I saw it too, magic carpet, right? There's going to be a way to sail above it. There's going to be a way to be more untouched by the fall and by the storm. Uh, but it's going to be all about you watching videos like this <laughs> and doing whatever you can to just stay in that trust of that eagle vision, that hindsight vision, that that way that just knows, I don't understand this, but I know it's gonna work out. I know it's gonna work out. I know we're safe. I know we can bring this into right action. So do be aware of that if anything or whatever's gonna happen. You know, I feel like this is gonna be a much different holiday season than what we're used to. I feel like people are gonna be spending a lot different. Um, you know, and that's good. You know, this is where a lot of these things you can't understand why they're happening but you know one of the things that we so ultimately need to stop doing is stop creating the demand for all these low vibrational expressions from fast food if you don't go to fast food if you don't buy the stuff we'll lose the supply or we'll lose the demand so then there we won't need the supply you know like if all of us were on that vibration of I will not buy meat that's not organic grass-fed proving to me that they're treating it humanely and doing everything they can to really honor the animal um, if all of us said that and stood up and said that then there would be no need for factory farming you know so what I was going to say with Christmas is there's going to be much more of a wanting to either do do it yourself and wanting to buy homemade wanting to buy quality gifts and not just junk to give you junk. Oh, I have to buy her something. Let me just go to get junk, you know, enough of the junk. The junk is all that stuff that is being made and is being exploitative, exploited, exploited, exploit, ex, is going to um, exploit people um, who can be paid to make this cheap junk so it's not being made in an honoring way and I know there's things that suck like that because I know in a lot of countries they're just so happy to have a job even though they're six years old and making a penny a week or whatever so there's so much more that has to be healed down the whole line of that supply and demand for it but we are still like just waking more to, I want to get something made in my town. I want to support an artist who lives here. Um, I want to have something that's really quality. I want to like, you know, instead of, I remember one year I did this, instead of giving any gifts to the whole family, I used all that money and just put it into donations, which they weren't so happy about that. I <laughs> know everyone was like, oh, okay. And I'm like, what? 
dude, wake up, you know, because it's like, but doing something like that, instead of buying these gifts saying, hey, I used your money and, and, and now I'm helping this kid in an orphanage or whatever, you know, so there's just something shifting in us right now. It's going to be a very different Christmas, I believe. And, um, but it's just, it's, you know, we're getting into this new world way and we have to be what we want to see change in this world. So all these things are changing in us and it's nothing to be scared of and it's nothing to worry about, but we do have to get things more to sustainability, to local and to one love and, you know, you know, get things to local, but then also get things to such an awareness of everybody else out there you know, and how we're all in this together. And I mean, we really are, you know, and so, but it's a lot of baby steps because so much has been out of whack everywhere. So um, that can make one very overwhelmed. And that's why you have to always still be going to that place of immersing yourself in good deeds, immersing yourself in seeing good things going on in the world. I was saying I, I need somebody to make some videos where they're just scene after scene after scene after scene of really good things happening. You know, just kind things happening. Um, we just need to just keep seeing that and be like, oh, oh. It's going to be okay because it's going to be, we're on a really serious balancing thing right now where it's like, there's so much dark. There's so much to be fearful. Like my head honestly hurts from even bringing all that stuff up now, but it's, um, that's going to be our challenge right now is just staying in the safe. And honestly, you know, we know that our thoughts are creating everything, but we forget when we're in these fearful states, but as I kind of see, what does it hurt to believe the best, you know? If all this other stuff does happen and it ends up not being true and we die, oh well, you know? But what did it hurt to at least try to come together with other like minds and dream of good things happening and dream of the best possible scenario for all and dream of people waking up and wanting to love one another and take care of one another? Like, what does it hurt to actually dream that? The most natural thing, the easiest thing to do is to dream of the fear and to dream of the worst thing happening and to believe that you're not going to be taken care of and to believe that, oh my gosh, this isn't going to work out. You know, the most natural thing to do is to fall into that negative way of like lot seeing life. But, you know, if you're going to think something anyway, and you're going to use that time to dream something anyway, why not make it the good things? What's it going to hurt? You know, and truth be told, it's going to heal because if enough of us are sitting here thinking that, it's just going out and will wipe out all the fear that's out there. Even like someone, I, you know, when I was out that other day, and it's every day, like I'm like, let me clarify. You know, it's every day I do that though, or most days, but still that was an exceptional day where I was so aware of all the influence I was making and how I noticed everybody kind of even watching me too. Like I could feel so many more eyes on me than normal. And it was like every good deed was being seen by all these other people and like, all those people may have been like, this world is messed up, you know, and everybody, nobody cares about anybody, nobody takes care of anybody, and nobody has that kind of like protection thing going on anymore. And then they saw me doing all that, and they're like, oh, that makes me so happy. You know what I saw today? I saw this, da da da. You know, and then bit by bit, you just end up changing everybody's life like that, you know? So, um, let me. Uh, Let's see if there's anything else. I felt like there was so much I had to say. So, uh, oh gosh, my head hurts now. Um, hmm, let me see. Um, okay, I can just talk about the, I think I did, I tell you that the shamanic journey is finally going to happen. Um, it's been so many months. I, spart, I first started telling you about it, I think in like August or July and, uh, and my friend had to, you know, go through some things in life first. And we're having our first one on Sunday. It's going to be, I think it's going to be 6 p.m. Mountain Time. And um, I need to put the link of checking your time to see if you can come. But what we're going to do with this one is we are going to record it. So you can listen to it later, which I think is so great. Uh, but it's going to be, it's going to be a show with me and my friend. And um, uh 
She's a shamanic practitioner in Santa Fe, New Mexico with me here. And uh, so we're going to do kind of a show where I'm first going to talk about astrology and the energy and whatever kind of introduction comes to me. And then, you know, she's going to talk a little bit and then we're going to try to do like two um, journeys. So um, I have more information on it. And what's so great because you're going to be at your home and able to come together in this group shamanic journeying session one where we're all together and we're all kind of on the same vibration but you get to do it at home and we're going to do them twice a month around the new moon and the full moon whenever times are really good with it and um probably will only be about an hour long we don't want it to be too long but you'll just have this kind of regular practice where you can really kind of go to another place to get some other answers through symbolism you know and the more you do this it's just going to contribute to you being that person you want to see in the world being the change you want to see in the world so we're really going to work on that and it's going to be so exciting i'm really thrilled for it um Let's see. I have the information. Oh, yeah, I'll put the link down below. And um, what else did I want to say about that? I'm so excited for it. It's going to be kind of a self-care thing, too. You know, it'll be like you. Um, what's that word? Gosh, sometimes I just am so blank with that. Uh, you, like, contributing to this self-care thing that is working to value yourself. So that's going to be really fun. Uh, it is going to be donation based. Um, Four dollars if you are not a member of Our Embrace. It'll be two dollars if you are a member of Our Embrace. Um, but we are having the doors open for anybody, so we don't want this to stop you if you don't even have, you know, two or four bucks. Which I, like I said, I spent a lot of time in the past 10 years where I would have like my last dollars. So I'm very sympathetic to that one. Um, so that's going to be going on with that. Um, and it starts Sunday. Uh, oh, and you know what else I figured out? Because, um, I've been so backed up and so stressed out and it's been like an entire year of it. And I finally like had the official breakdown last night. <laughs> I was like crying, you know, like out hiking of like, I just, I, I can't keep up and there's so much more I want to do. And I'm feeling like, you know, so it was kind of a, it was a really like feeling sorry for myself kind of thing that we have to do a lot of times to align things in a better way, you know? It's kind of normal, but so I had, uh, I finally came up what I was going to do because I knew that I wanted to go a little bit more private um, with my videos and only have them in, oh, did I call it, I called it the old name, didn't I? On the Love Collective, um, my private space, the Love Collective. So uh, I wanted to go more private with just people who really want to see me and people who really want what I'm offering and who really like want this and aren't just more going to be like, oh, you know, you're just weird. And, you know, I just don't want that energy around me. <laughs> Is that, that's okay to say, right? So, uh, uh, what I'm going to do, cause at first I was thinking I'm going to, um, well, anyway, what I've decided to do, oh no, my landlord's going to be popping his head in. I knew he was going to come home. I knew he was gonna come. I knew he was gonna come to my house when I was recording. I already knew I was gonna be like, "I'm recording," and he just honked outside my house. Um, um, hold on a minute. He's gonna be like, "Knock, knock." What was I talking about, too? Oh, maybe I'll keep talking about. It. Hey, I'm recording. I'm recording my videos. I can't talk right now. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> I knew you'd come in when I was recording these two. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so what I wanted to say is that what I'm going to start doing is um, I'm going to do weekly videos like this weekly right that'll be a lot easier than for me doing the individual ones because I know you guys like them but 
I would rather just teach you how to do that, which I'm going to be starting my um, transit reading classes on the 21st of December. So I'd rather like teach you to do that yourself. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing one video a week and I will make the new moon and the full moon ones public and on YouTube. So those will always still be available to you. But then the other two weeks in between that time are only going to be in the Love Collective. So if you want to join the Love Collective, which is $11.11 .11 for the whole year, then you can be in that private space of ours and we'll, you know, where we share all kinds of love and cool things anyway. It's awesome. I love it. Um, but so um, I thought that that would be a good way to do it because you, I don't want just anybody in there, you know. I want like us all to be kind of like on the same path and wanting to be these love beings, you know, and wanting to really change the world and wanting to live our purpose and wanting to live as artists, you know. My whole point with the space is I want to encourage, I want to help promote people too um, in order to be making a living from their art. So that's why I promote the artists that are in it. But I thought that that would be a good way to do it because only if you really love me and you really want to hear more will you pay 11 bucks to come into the group. So I thought that that would be a good way to do it. So they're going to be weekly now. So next week I'll be talking again, but it will only be in the private space. Uh, so I, I think that'll be a really good thing. I liked that compromise. I came up with that last night. And it made me happy. So, um, um, oh, and then also, I think it's coming out today, we're going to be having our gift guide because every week for the next four weeks on the Love Collective, uh, my friend is picking out 20 items from all the artists within. And then she's putting together something right now. And uh, then we'll blast it all over Facebook and all the people who are in or promoted and it can share it. So it's another way to just like get all the artists out there with what they're doing. So we have three, one's coming out I believe today. Everything's so late in life right now, that's why I put it like that. I believe it's coming out today, but you know, <laughs> timings. So it could be tomorrow, but I think it's today. And then for the next um, three weeks, we're gonna continue to do uh, more of the items from the people within so that will be cool and then that's where cool we were talking last night and we were like we need to do all kinds of gift guides you know like a baby shower and um, you know all this kind of stuff so that is going to be happening and I'll put the link down there below for the gift guide thank you <laughs> um, and let me see, I wonder if that is enough. I think that we may have said our fill. And what's so cool too is like now I can be like, oh, well, if I forgot it, I'm back in a week and I can talk about it. So that's good because I do always, uh, I think about so much during the week that I want to share. And then I just hope that I will remember it when I start recording. <laughs> but often I don't. And then I have to do it again. So, uh, yeah, I think we're going to stop there. Oh, 56 minutes. So you have a beautiful full moon and just know this one's, you know, with you feeling safe to state your needs and, you know, even kind of put it out there what you really need to feel more happy in life in relation to maybe needing more money, you know, needing to be more valued. Um, whatever it is, there's something that's ringing in you that relates to you feeling more worth, more value in the world, and then more happiness because you're being taken care of and you're feeling supported and you're feeling like it's okay, you know. So those are things that'll be coming to you. Um, I hope to hear you on our shamanic journey. Oh, this is something I should share this too here. Um, when we do the shamanic journey, we are going to have it um, because we're all collectively in it. There's going to be a lot of similarities for a lot of us. And Tara will be at the end, she will be um, kind of, she's, she's so good too. You guys are going to love her. She's so psychic and connected and this is just the perfect career for her. But so she'll pull through some further things to share with everybody. 
um, with what she saw, with what came to her when we're all journeying. But um, after the journeys, we do want to have it where some people can come forward and share their experiences. Uh, so I'm just putting it out there like anybody who is on the call, we do want a couple people to come forward and share because because we're doing this as a collective unit of all of us together doing this, there's going to be similarities for everybody. Uh, I also have a shamanic journeying private group on the Love Collective where you can go in later and we'll share more about what we went through and how it was and you know what happened and what came to us and um, just to keep it more interactive because it's really important that we share, 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 share in these times because so much of what is happening is going on with all these other people around you. That's why even me, you know, like I'm sharing all these things and you're like, oh my gosh, yeah, me too. Oh my gosh, it's going on with me too. So we need more people that are really doing this and opening up and sharing because it frees you up if it's going on with you too. You know, it frees you up to share it. It frees you up to move through it. It frees you up to see that, um, that um, it frees you up to see that, uh, um, oh, I'm sorry, I, had, I just had this thought, there's a class I'm gonna be teaching in a couple seasons that's just on Pluto, Chiron, and Saturn. And I just had this big idea of how I'm going to open it. But anyway, that one's going to be about a class that's on healing our wounds and, you know, things like that and rising above and stuff. Um, but so, yeah, so that's going on with that. So it's just in a couple of days. So anyway, okay, I think I'm going to stop. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting to rambling point and um, I should stop. So you guys have a beautiful full moon. I look forward to seeing some of you in a week. And hopefully I'm going to be getting the written horoscopes out. That's what I'm going to start doing again is just like as for the individual readings, I want to do it more with writing because so much more comes through me through writing than sitting here in front of a camera talking. Uh, I have a lot easier time writing it. <laughs> so, okay, we're going to stop there. You have a beautiful full moon and just keep remembering that there's so many good things going on out there. Keep remembering that so many people are just like you, working just as hard as you are to be these people, to be this change that we want to see in this world. And we have to keep connecting to each other, you know, and recognizing that, that we're not alone even though all this other stuff is crazy going on around us and people are so full of fear, like the worst ever in humankind, in, in humankind, in, in humanity, in, in history. <laughs> okay, so yeah, all right. Okay, bye.